welcome back to Beauty Within. It's your host Felicia and today I have such a special host with me, <laughs> Daisy Jing. So she is the CEO, girl boss of Banish and you also do a podcast, you have your own YouTube channel, basically started the brand from the ground up. And why we have her on today is because, you know, on this channel, I love talking about acne. And there's no better person to invite on the show than Daisy to share with you guys her experiences because you've also gone through some like acne related issues right can you tell us a little bit about it yeah thank you so much Felicia so I've had acne since the third grade and my skin has been my biggest physical insecurity like yeah. every skin problem I've had it when you're getting acne at such a young age you're like, I'm gonna do everything to get rid of right. it. I think my family and I, we spent almost $20,000. We went to so many different dermatologists. We would drive like four hours away to see other people. It was weird because it was like the more stuff I put on, mm -hmm. the more pills I ingested, the worse it got. I fell into this depression because, you know, when you're trying so hard and people are promising you the world and you're seeing all these advertisements for clear skin and people are calling you pizza face and oh my gosh. you're washing your face and your face starts bleeding because it just scabs everywhere. I mean, I was just so, so depressed. In 2009, in my darkest, darkest days, yeah. I turned on my uh, webcam and I filmed a video called Growing Up Ugly and I showed all the sides of my face and everything. And I think the biggest thing is it's not about being perfect. And that's why my TED talk is called A Tragedy Called Perfection. Mm -hmm. Cause just cause you use these products does not mean your skin is gonna be perfect. And I always right. tell people, it's not about perfection. It's about being better than you were yesterday. And, and realizing that like, even if you do have acne or scarring or problematic skin, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean you're any less. So mm -hmm. it's so important that we learn that skin is so much more than just on the outside. And that's so perfect, like we vibe so well. So that's what we're going to be exploring today. We're gonna dig into Daisy's mind a little bit and know a little more about what she went through, what your experiences and your tips are, because I think learning through experience is probably like one of the biggest things that you can like gain from. <laughs> Going on to your YouTube channel, it's yeah. called The Acne Channel and it's where Daisy shares a lot of her experience. Like from 2009 up until this point and going through like the most tumultuous like acne journey, what was that like and how did you start to learn more about your skin, what to do? So after the reception of that growing up ugly video, I was like, people want me to talk more about my skin. People mm -hmm. wanna know what's working and what's not. And so I started documenting that journey and I would buy different skincare products and I'd be like, this works, this doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And then I was trying to figure out like, why do some products just make me break out? Like, yeah. why is it the more I put on my skin, the worse it's getting? And then I started researching all the ingredients. Mm -hmm. And I realized, wow, I couldn't believe a lot of the ingredients in the skincare actually made it worse. And they were causing my skin to break out. Oh my gosh, like, like what? Um, you know, a lot of silicone ingredients, okay. yep. Um, so it kind of makes the skin feel nice. Yeah, soft and blur soft, out. yep. But to have it in your serum and putting it on a night every night would just cause my acne to flare up, right? Whoa. Or things like mineral oil, artificial colors or fragrances are added yeah. in skincare. So it looks really sexy, you know, in the bottle or, yeah. you know, putting on it on, skin. it feels good. But over time, it would just accumulate and make me break out. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is what's going on. So I would start talking about that. And then I started going to more natural routes. So I'd go to Whole Foods or health food stores. I'd actually buy the raw ingredients, mm -hmm. kind of mix them up, put them on my skin. So I kind of steered away from the mainstream because I realized I am allergic to yeah. everything that's out there. Like hypersensitive towards yep. these ingredients. Yep. So can you share with us what your skin type is? It's very thick. It would be oily, very huge pores. I relate to you so much. It's like, but when did that, was it always like cystic acne you were fighting or was it kind of hormonally induced? In the beginning, in the third grade, it was like the teenage acne. So that's the T-zone mm -hmm. where you get the tiny little bumps. It doesn't tend to scar, yeah. but then towards high school and college, it was just full blown cystic. Mm -hmm. And it was all along like the size the of the U-zone. Yep, the uh -huh. U-zone, yep. Right before my period, yeah. I would get like one to two humongous cystic yeah. things and that would just leave a huge scar on my face. Yeah. So over the course of a few years, you just get like 40 scars on your yeah. face. And they yeah. take so long to heal from and they're like deep and they yeah. hurt when you touch yeah, them. Yeah, they hurt and they bleed. Okay, so it was deep cystic acne. Would you say it was hormonal? 
Definitely hormonal induced, but I do think diet played okay. part. Yep. Then you started researching into like published articles on skincare, mm -hmm. looking into ingredients, and then what happened after you started like concocting your own kind of formulas? Yeah, so I would used to put like layers of benzoyl peroxide, you know, on my face. Mm -hmm. I would take uh, antibiotics, I mean, everything, right? And then- And what were you saying about the benzoyl peroxide? Yeah, it bleached, it bleaches, you know, my towels, my bed sheets, like I had blue, like white stripes on my bed sheets. Yeah. My hair had like highlights. Oh I mean, my god! I mean, but you think about um, it going into your body. Yeah. Like that. And so currently I'm six months pregnant and you're not allowed to use benzoyl peroxide because right. it has a systemic effect maybe right. on the baby. And you're just like, oh my God, I was doing that like, for how was several I years. Like, why was I doing that to myself? Yeah. So I went more of a natural route mm -hmm. and it actually really helped, mm -hmm. but I was left with terrible scarring. Then I was like, I want to find a solution for right. the scarring. And I think the scarring is something people don't, necessarily t like talk, talk about. about. It's very traumatic when you yes. have it, yeah. Yes. There's acne scars, which are actually physical indentations. Mm -hmm. And then there's acne marks, which is like hyperpigmentation. Yes. Yes. So um, after a lot of acne, you will be left, because it's like inflammation yep. on the skin. Yep. So what were you facing? And then how did you like go about kind of yeah. correcting it? So I was faced with both. So um, yeah, you get the, the red mark or right. the mark. That is easier to treat and it's, you know, with some makeup, you yeah, can barely see yeah. it. The indentation part was like, oh, like, because yeah. you can't put makeup on and like, yes. you don't know how to get rid of it. So that was really, really difficult. And those are the ones that you kind of have to spend money on. Yeah, that's actually how I stumbled into Banish and mm -hmm. microneedling. I saved up for several years to get my skin lasered. So I went to um, this plastic surgeon. He said, no, lasers don't work on Asian skin. Mm. Because my skin has like a brown pigment underneath, so yeah. if I get lasers, I'm gonna get brown dots. <laughs> oh my you know? gosh! And make it worse. Yeah, it, it's lasers are not good for people who have like ethnic skin. So if you're African American or if you have darker pigment, the colors are not gonna. Yeah. So he said, don't do this. Yeah. But there is this thing called microneedling. Blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. This was. 2011, 2012. Yeah. So nobody knew what microneedling was. Yeah. I was like, no way am I gonna do. Like, it no sounds way. intimidating. Yeah. But then I actually did more research. The first microneedling, Dr. Lance Sutter Sutterfield, a South African plastic surgeon, wrote a bunch of you know articles on this. And I was like, you know what? If this surgeon says I should do it, I'm gonna yeah. try it. Okay. So I did it, um, and then I researched and I found that vitamin C, particularly l acid, yeah. the ferulic acid, all that placed on top right after will help the like red marks instantly go away and it'll help build the collagen underneath the skin. For the first time in my life, people were positively commenting on my skin. The analogy my mom gave me was like, your skin looks like it's blooming. Like, you know, when the clouds mm. bloom, like, yeah, it had this glow to wow. it. So I was like, dang, there's something there. And then people just wanted to know what I was using, yeah. And that's kind of the birth of Banish. <laughs> yeah, that was right? the birth, yep. You took that and you basically created, or whoever wanted to order it, you would create it yourself at home on a small scale. Yep. And then what happened? I did want to be a dermatologist, right? Yep. Well, that's why I did pre-med. But I was like, I'm not doing you know, business. What I don't know any of this. But I knew the ingredients. I knew where to source them from. I knew what worked and mm -hmm. didn't work for my skin. Mm -hmm. So yeah, people just started emailing me wanting to try it. Mm -hmm. So I'd send a bunch and uh, one became five, became 10. People have a pain point, which is their skin, acne scarring, nothing works for them. Yeah. And I solved that for myself and in yeah. turn wanted to help other people. So that's how it's What are the ingredients that you found out that fundamentally like changed something on your skin? We have the banisher, which is the microneedling device tool. Yeah. But in terms of ingredients, l azorbic acid for sure. Okay. That's the form of vitamin C. That's where, that's the, like the gold standard. It's the pure form. The pure form. Mm -hmm. And that means it will go into the skin and actually like get that collagen building. Yeah. Because other forms of vitamin C, I believe sodium phosphate, azorbyl palmitate, those mm. forms, yes, they go on the skin, but they don't, might not necessarily go into the skin cells yeah. and like, Build that collagen, it. yeah. So we use that, we use pure l acid and we actually make it fresh every day. Our vitamin C serum is clear. Mm -hmm. You leave it out for six months, it becomes orange. It okay. oxidizes. It oxidizes. So it really shows to you that like we use the pure ingredients mm -hmm. and that is a game changer. You apply it on right after, you use the banisher mm -hmm. and it'll just like, 
your face glows and the red marks are gone immediately. And I think there's like different reasons that we get inflammation and breakouts, right? So we were touching on a little bit about sugar, but as well as that, there's like stress, there's hormones. A lot of our banished customers, they actually say going vegan has helped them. Because if you think about it, how, are, how is meat and dairy made? Today, yes. unfortunately, they're pumping these animals with hormones. Yeah. You're putting it in your body. It's affecting with your own natural Urine cycles. Mm -hmm. Yep, and that can cause everything to go out yeah. of whack. And the confusing thing is it doesn't affect everyone the same right, way, exactly. right? Yep. It's just like, unfortunately for super sensitive people, you have to do your own research and yeah. test a lot yeah. more and be very hyper aware of what your body yeah. is trying to like send messages exactly. to you for, right? And what works for one person, again, doesn't work for, for, another. for another person. And I think it's so important to listen to your body. Like when I was breaking out, my body was saying, help Daisy, you're putting on way too much. Like stop, yeah. stop. I wasn't listening. I just kept putting on more. Yeah. And I think our skin is amazing. It's a communication tool yes. to us that something, something isn't going right. <laughs> Okay, so we have the Banish products here and all together in the line, there's eight products, but they're all very natural. They're vegan friendly, like pumpkin and aloe vera. I realize all the ingredients are so great for sensitive skin, but they're all designed for like acne problematic skin, mm -hmm. right? Whenever I look at what I want in a product, I think what works for me and what doesn't work for me. And I yeah. take inspiration from everywhere. So I don't focus on what's trendy or what's sexy. Mm. Um, like Korean skincare, you know, there's yeah. 10 steps. Uh, it's just too sensitive for my skin. <laughs> yeah. I will break out if I have that many right. products. But an example of like an inspiration was um, our newest product, the Fighter Gel, was inspired by my trip to Budapest, mm -hmm. where I went to the Shishkirni baths and like bathed, and I noticed my eczema went away, my acne just wasn't flaring out, my skin was so clear and yeah. bright. And I was like, what is in the water in there? And I did more yeah. research. The ingredient is sulfur. So we have MSM, which is a form of sulfur in our phyto gel. And I wanted it to be in a, based in an aloe vera gel. Yes. Because aloe vera is very hydrating. It has antiseptic properties. Most of our products are based in an aloe vera gel. And yes. I also wanted it to be super minty. So our cleanser, our elixir. I realize that, yeah, the cleanser. Because, you know, in the morning, you just want to refresh. Wake up. You know, like, Aven or La Roche Posay, yeah. their entire brand is also based on like thermal spring yeah. water, right? And I think the water part of it, like all the ingredients in most of the ingredients in skincare, the first one is water. Mm -hmm. And I think it's underrated how powerful the effect of it can be. Water is really important. You know, in um, in Budapest, the sulfur water, the sodium ion pumps in yeah. the cells, like will like kind of push out all the toxins even more, mm. which is why it's so great at like chronic illnesses, inflammation, yeah. cancers, all of that. So it's all these little nuances yeah. in how these structures are made up that can make a huge difference over time. This one, would you say you can slather over any sort of like topical inflammation that yep. you see? So it's safe for eczema, like rosacea, um, yep, um, psoriasis. Psoriasis and uh, people also use it as a spot treatment for acne. One of my favorites is the pumpkin enzyme mask mm -hmm. because I really love when natural ingredients is used in a very natural way utilizing what it already mm -hmm. has. Pumpkins are high in all these different sorts of vitamins mm -hmm. and the enzymes help to break down dead skin mm -hmm. and also show like radiant skin. So how did you come across pumpkin? Was it one of those things that like you were in the kitchen one day and then you tried yourself? Yeah, ba I mean, basically, I mean, pumpkin <laughs> is really high vitamins, uh, beta carotene, vitamin C. It has naturally occurring glycolic acid too. Mm -hmm. And glycolic acid has tiny, tiny molecules, so it'll go into the pores yeah. and like vacuum all that dirty stuff out, kind of naturally slough off the dead skin. Mm -hmm. One of the good things about Banish is that it's also very affordable. Mm -hmm. And I think like you were talking about vitamin C and you know the longevity yes. of your products. You said the shelf life is six, six months, months yep. right? Because of the elescorpic acid and how it oxidizes and you need to mm -hmm. like reformulate. So everything's in small batches. Right. We don't need to use as many preservatives. Yeah. Even something like the vitamin C elixir, mm -hmm. um, we don't put any form of antifreeze in the product. So if we ship it to like the North Pole um, in February, sometimes our customers will say, oh, like why is the bottle, you know, like a little yeah. leaking yeah. because the water expands when it's frozen. I mean, our products are very pure, very natural. I think yeah. of it more as a restaurant yeah. than almost like a skincare company. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit more about both of the vitamin C because vitamin C, um, was one of the ingredients that you were talking mm -hmm. about that really helped with hyperpigmentation mm -hmm. and the collagen production. And do you use that with 
this little contraption yeah. here. Okay, so tell me how all this works. <laughs> yeah, so this is our um, Banisher 2.0. We launched it last year. Yeah. It's our patented product. It took two and a half years. Before this, you know, they had the derma rollers where you yes. can just roll it on. We had some complaints from our customers. If you're pressing too hard and like going like this, you can actually leave more scarring. Okay, so with microneedling, how does it work? Like, does it pierce through just that top like epidermis yeah. layer? So this one has titanium little bristles. Like we call them bristles because they're so tiny that are gold plated and they just go into the skin and kind of stimulate that collagen production. Yeah. So your skin interprets that as like a little cut and yeah. they're like, oh my God, let's bring in the collagen and wound fighting troops yeah. and they'll start like building more collagen. So you're tricking yourself into thinking there's an injury when there's mm -hmm. not. And then over time, you just get more collagen buildup. Mm, and that's what makes it like plump and youthful. Plump and youthful. And clear. And then when you pair it with our Banish oil, which has that elozorbic acid, that yeah. potent, collagen, you know, accelerator, it'll just speed right up. And when you have an acne scar, you know, the scar is like this, right? So you just want to yeah. push it up a little bit. Yep. Mm. How would I use this at home? We wanted to create a stamper because a lot of people were just rolling too much. And a lot of people also have active acne. Yes. So when you get a PRP facial or microneedling done professionally, mm. they're going to just go all over your face. And then it's going to... And then the bacteria is going to spread. Ugh. So I wanted to create something that was just if you, let's say you had a pimple, it left a scar, and yeah. you just want to make sure it doesn't further scar, you can just really target wherever the area was. So that's why we have this here. So that would really help with acne marks and hyperpigmentation. Mm -hmm. And then how long does that take for the skin to really like heal to show that new vibrant skin? Like you will see a glow and there's very little downtime. <laughs> <laughs> so we just say don't wear any makeup like yeah. right after, yeah. don't go out in the sun. Because it's so raw. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also we recommend using our products afterwards, but if yeah. you're not going to use our products, yeah. don't use like something not natural okay. because it might, if it has like silicones, for example, it might yeah. make you break out yeah, yeah. after a day, you should be good to go. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a little bit different than the professional ones in which it's a lot of trauma to the skin yeah. and for five days you're scabbing and peeling and, and everything. And don't they like, put plasma back yeah, so into the- Yeah, they spin your blood, yeah. they put it back on. I mean, there's different ways to do that. You cannot do that at home. No, do not try that. Do not try to take your blood and put it on. <laughs> and also what we have here is because I travel a ton and yeah. I know our customers are always on the go. This acts as a cleaning container, so you just fill it up to the fill line, screw it in, it cleans, you can bring it with you. Okay, so and you clean it with alcohol? Yep. Okay, this kit comes with this that tool and the oil. And the oil. Okay, yep. so after that, you can just use the, the oil. oil. Yep. If you're too sensitive to the oil, you can use um, our vitamin C cream, which mm -hmm. also has um, vitamin C in there. And then you can spray with the elixir, or you can just. Honestly, like I love all these ingredients. So it's the glycerin, and then there's the illoscopic acid, the aloe, witch hazel, ferulic acid, vitamin E, rose hip. So one of the things, um, I didn't want to use propylene glycol in the vitamin C serum. Yeah. That's, uh, most serums have propylene glycol. Um, and what would you say is the purpose of uh, that? It prevents it from freezing. Mm. It prevents more solvency in the products. Mm -hmm. So we use vegetable glycerin, a more natural, gentler form. It is a little sticky, you know? But I was like, okay, it's fine if it's sticky. Like, I'd rather have it feel kind of weird, but actually work, work. than feel great and yes. just cause you to break out, yeah. Okay, and would you say this is safe for all skin types? Yes, so you can see it's um, it's clear it's on your hand. It's actually so lightweight. Yeah, I mean if you <laughs> if you put it on, it can get sticky if you just yeah. put it on a lot. Yeah, I would say this is our cult favorite, our most repurchased mm. product. We all know here that I love my clay moss. Mm -hmm. So you guys have this one here. It's the activated charcoal. Mm -hmm. How does this one work? So activated charcoal is like ingredients that really can like act as a magnet to attract bacteria, mm -hmm. oil, dirt. Yes. So it'll go in into your pores and get out all that gunk and then you wash it off and it mm -hmm. kind of clears it out. So we're basically trying to clear out the skin instead of like drying mm -hmm. it all the time. What do you see as the most frequent kind of questions or concerns that people come to your website? I think people want a quick fix and people want just bam, bam, bam. They want to see results mm -hmm. right away. And so I always say this will help prevent all that stuff from happening. But if you're getting acne, we need to solve the root cause. Mm -hmm. We got to go into like your health, your well-being, you know, your gut, whatever. If you have some kind of chronic illness, mm -hmm. if you're not treating the cause of it, but just masking the symptom by painkillers or 
whatever you use, it's gonna come back. So I think the symptom and figuring out what causes it is so, so important. Can you share a little bit about like the misunderstanding that people with oily skin can't use oils, that it will like clog their pores even more? It's not necessarily the oil that might be clogging, it might be the other ingredients, mm -hmm. things that you might be allergic to. So um, definitely you do not need to be scared of oils if you have right. oily, oily skin. skin. Yep. Like for me, when I was trying to use all those harsh ingredients, my skin would triple the amount of oil, like trying to compensate, right? right. It's like when you wash your hair too much, it's just gonna get more oily. Yes. <sighs> That's my life. <laughs> no, because if you have oily skin, it's basically oily scalp and yeah. oily body, yep. basically. Yep. <laughs> What's your current skincare routine? And I've always been minimal mm. while starting this. Yeah. Um, and now that I'm pregnant, um, Banish products are pregnancy safe. So I was like, oh, that's very convenient. <laughs> yes. But I'll wash my face with the All Clear Mint Cleanser. Mm. And then I'll just spray the elixir. I spray the Vitamin C Beauty Elixir or I use the um, Evian water, you just spray yes. them throughout the day to keep my skin moisturized. Um, I don't like putting too many creams or gels on my face if I don't need to. I have a humidifier on at all times. At night, really minimal. I will use the banisher once every other week. And then I will also use uh, the pumpkin enzyme mask. I'll put that on and the activated charcoal clay mask on before that time of month when I'm gonna break out. Yeah. And then I will like kind of rub it in the shower and like yeah. slough it all off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that has really helped. I th definitely think less is more. Mm -hmm. And I think naturally our skin should be at its best without putting stuff on it. Through your journey, what's your approach towards like self-care and confidence? So if you're suffering with any kind of confidence issue, you don't feel like you're pretty enough or your skin is not what you want it to be. I always say focus on helping other people. For me, that was my YouTube channel. But then over time, when you help other people, you're like, oh my gosh, I'm so much more than my skin. I'm so much more than the way I look. I'm it's so much empowering. more. It's empowering. You have so many other talents than you know all the superficial stuff. Because when you can work on something than just yourself, yeah like everything kind of falls into place. I feel like we get very insecure and not confident when we're yeah. focused on our own ego. And even me as a CEO, sometimes, you know, my ego, I'm just like, ooh, I wanna, you know, be more successful yeah. and have all this and all these awards. Mm -hmm. But every time I fall into that, I'm very miserable and unhappy. Mm -hmm. So I always go back into how can we better serve our customers? How can we make our products better? How can we do all that? And just everything falls into place. And then in terms of self-care, I have found that Whenever you don't feel authentic, that's when you feel drained and that's when you need that self-care. Right. When I'm just by myself and away from what people are telling me what to do or all this propaganda or all this media out there, mm -hmm. you can really figure out like, oh, what is it? And that's why people meditate, you know, go on silent retreats. Mm -hmm. I think it's important to just clutter all the noise, clutter like, all the- back. Yeah, like that whole minimalist movement, like digital minimalism. Yeah. Like sometimes you just gotta figure out like where do I stand and what yeah. is important to me. I always thought self-care and like the whole wellness boom was always such an interesting phenomenon because it's like they're trying to sell you like um, different products, yeah. right? Like a pillowcase or a <laughs> diffuser. And although that's not saying those things don't work, how they work is not that you're gonna buy it back and it's gonna change your life. Mm -hmm. But those things help to facilitate like a larger right. problem. Maybe it's a first step in something, yeah. but the root cause, as you were saying, is actually that's what you need to focus yeah. on. This is probably the best time to ask, what is beauty within to you? Beauty within means that you're fully confident and authentic to yourself and your truth. Mm -hmm. You feel like you have the freedom to express you and who you are, and you're not trying to fit any mold of what beauty says or what society says that you should be. So I think it's really being your most authentic self. I love it so much. Well, thank you so much for sharing kind of like your story thank and the you. brand. Can you tell us about where we can find you, your podcast? You can find banish.com and that's also where our podcast is hosted. You can find us on Instagram at banish acne scars. And for before and afters, we have a gallery at banish, the Instagram handle. And they're insane. The before and afters? Yeah. it's it's inspiring all the time. Yeah, we get so many submissions. We we wish we had time to like post all of them, but yeah, yeah. definitely submit your before and afters. My personal handle is um, at Dazers89. So make sure you check that out. We'll leave all the details in the description box and we hope you enjoyed this episode. I loved having you on. Thank you so much for sharing your experience and your thoughts because you so I think much. a lot of people can connect to that. And I think towards the end, we always need like almost a guiding light yeah. sometimes, you know, that it's not, you're not alone in this, yeah. even though it seems like it when you're going through the darkest times. So thank you again, and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye. Bye. <laughs>